Welcome back to Flashpoint. My conversation today with Haley Stevens and Lena Epstein, their only face-to-face -face meeting of the 2018 campaign. Uh, the ads have gotten bitter, of course, as they always do. I want to let you both respond to an ad that is running against you. And uh, let me start with this one, which is uh, running against uh, the candidacy of Haley Stevens. You can't live here forever, son. Why not? Haley Stevens moved into her mom's place to run for Congress, and her ads say she ran the entire auto rescue. Right. And this summer, you ran a McDonald's? You need a job. Healthcare coverage. <laughs> Stevens says illegal immigrants need jobs first, and government can run our health care. Uh, it, it kind of takes again back to this resume issue we talked about earlier, but the broader thing, po point there is that you kind of parachuted back home in to uh, try to run for a district that maybe you don't know as well as, as maybe you otherwise might. Your response? Well, I'm a proud daughter of Oakland County. I'm a graduate of Seahome High School. My, my parents live in this district and I've spent a lot of time with our manufacturers on the I-75 corridor down to Western Wayne County and I'm running to be an advocate for those re this region. I'll, I know my opponent doesn't live in Michigan's 11th district and she's trying to move into it and I can't blame her because it's a fabulous place to live, work and raise a family. Uh let me move to an ad. For the, uh, this is only a part of what is a one-minute ad, so we're only uh, going to run an excerpt. This is an ad that's been uh, that is run against Lena Epstein. When President Trump got the nomination, that's when I knew I could no longer be a Republican or support that party. Lena Epstein was candidate Trump's campaign chair here in Michigan. I don't know how Lena Epstein can look herself in the mirror in the morning, knowing that she helped put this man in the Oval Office. You can't support Donald Trump and be a compassionate candidate. Uh, the broader point of that ad is really about uh, uh, she feels that uh, we have a misogynist in the in the White House and that as a woman, how could you possibly support him? So let me let you. Respond. I've been really proud to support the administration's policies that grow the American economy and keep our nation safe for future generations. It was Ronald Reagan who said that freedom and democracy is never more than one generation away from extinction. Donald Trump is a job creator like me and a businessman like me and was never going to apologize for our country being a country of laws and the fact that he wanted to make sure that we enforce those laws. I'm really proud to have helped him win Michigan, and I'm really proud to be supportive of his administration today. Let's move on. I'd like to talk about health care next. Um, there seems to be quite a debate right now over whether or not pre-existing conditions is really going to be able to stick around. As, and it's funny when people say that they've always been for pre-existing conditions. Well, it's a fairly new idea still in, uh, in, in American medicine, at least as far as coverage goes. What do you think is happening here, and what do you want to see happen? Well, l let's be very clear. You cannot support the repeal of of the Affordable Care Act and protect those with pre-existing conditions. That doesn't work. What I am proposing is to lower the cost of health care. Our prescription drug costs are through the roof. I, <clears throat> I spent a lot of time on this campaign trail talking with seniors who, frankly, are afraid to go to the pharmacy just to get that prescription filled because of what the cost might be. We need to allow Medicare to negotiate directly with our drug companies to lower those costs. We still have hundreds of thousands of people right here in Michigan without access to affordable health care and we emphatically need to stand by those with pre-existing uh, conditions. A number of Democrats are, are running this year and talking more about the idea of single-payer universal care. Are well, you in favor of that? I, I believe health care is a fundamental right. I think we've got a plan on how we can get more people covered. That's one of the reasons why I'm running for Congress. Does that and mean, how do you feel about universal care then, single I, I, payer? I think, I think that Medicare for all is, you know, a place where we can grow and go into, but for right now we need to focus on the cost of prescription drugs. Lena Epstein, your My thoughts. opponent has tiptoed around the answer. My opponent does stand for single payer health care system, which will bankrupt not only the taxpayers in, in this country, but it will bankrupt the system that it was intended to cover. At the end of the day, I think that every American Every American needs to have access to good quality and affordable health care, including individuals with pre-existing conditions. Two of my family members have pre-existing conditions. And as a business owner and a job creator, I understand how a broken health care system cripples the businesses and the families that they employ. I'm advocating for a market-based, consumer-centric plan that gives families and individuals and businesses the option to choose which path is the best for them. 
if my opponent wins, it's a vote for single, single payer government run health care system and it's a great example of how DC insiders and career politicians and bureaucrats want to do, want the government to fit all, fit all and it will actually bankrupt the system. Is, it, she, is she right because you said that you could see us getting to that eventually? I, look, I, I think the reality is is that my opponent was on Fox News uh, frequently last year advocating for the repeal of the Affordable Care Act, which would have bankrupted those with pre-existing conditions and put us back in the place that we were in the first place. There is a plan in place. We need to protect an improvement, and that's what's going to work for the people of Michigan's 11th district. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I will be legislating in a direction that ensures that every American gets access to good quality and affordable health care particularly individuals with pre-existing conditions. My plan involves assigning state high-risk pools that takes the funding, 8% of the population under the age of 65 with pre-existing conditions, that funding would go to the states to then but, allocate but it to if those I allow, But if I allow them to play with the price for pre-existing conditions and I price people out, it's the same thing as not covering pre-existing conditions, isn't it? At the end of the day, the, if the you the create day. a market-based, consumer-centric system, we will ensure that all Americans, including individuals with pre-existing conditions, get access to affordable, good quality care. I want to move to uh, our climate. Uh, the UN released a report that is pretty dire recently, uh, that we have a very short window of time left to respond uh, as human beings to uh, this crisis on the planet. The president still seems um, uh, unconvinced that, that man plays a role in this. How do you feel and what should we do about it? The jury is still out, but I think that man is, is it? certainly... Is the jury still out? I think that man has certainly had a role. And at the end of the day, Devin, the operative question is what can we do in Southeast Michigan what can we do as a nation? What can we do as global citizens to protect the environment for future generations? My business, a third of my business, is recycling. Recycling used materials and selling those used materials to recyclers. So when we but talk... But a lot of your business is the oil business, but which hasn't necessarily been my uh, business, thought of as being earth-friendly. My business is an automotive business that actually picks up used material and sells it to recyclers. We have to have a bigger conversation in this community about what we're going to do to further, further recycle and further protect our airways for future generations. What do you want to see us do? We need elected officials who are willing to say that climate change is real, and I am one of them. I was very disappointed to see the president pull out of the Paris Climate Accord. This is a place where the United States could be le leading on. This is certainly a, a challenge, but I believe that some of our biggest challenges are also our biggest opportunities. It's an opportunity for job growth. It's an opportunity for, for Michigan to actually lead the future. And for Frankly, I think we need to be promoting a science-driven agenda. I think we need to put the experts in place, we need to pay attention to the national security considerations, and we need to get serious. And at the well, end of the day, hang he on. did... I, I'm, I'm just about to run out of time, so the, so the last question I have for both of you is, what is the one thing that keeps you awake at night, your biggest worry? about the future of the United States, and you get, you'll get go first. My this. baby Emma keeps me up at night, literally well, yes, and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> but I want, I want to make sure that she is afforded the same opportunities that my husband Eric and I were offered. We are living the American dream. My family is a family of immigrants. So to be standing here today as a business leader and a job creator and a wife and a mom, what keeps me up at night is what will the future be like for Emma? That's why I'm running, to protect the American dream for her and for all of our our children. And Haley Stevens, what's it for you? I was out door knocking on the campaign trail in the city of Farmington and I, I had a young student come up to me and he was so excited to tell me that he was in advanced math. And I realized this student, he can't vote for me, but the work that we're going to do in the halls of Congress, that's going to affect him. Words matter, leadership matters. I'm running to deliver for this region and to serve as a, as a true public servant, someone who's stood up for this region before and always will. And we need to get back in the business of pragmatic problem solving of coming together and making people feel proud about the government that serves them. Haley Stevens, Lena Epstein, their only joint appearance of the campaign. I'm so grateful you were both here today. Thank you very much for coming. We come back, we're going to dig into the Attorney General's race. This is Flashpoint on Local 4. Thank you, Devin.